In this demonstration, I'll show you how to use L'Hopital's rule to find the limit of a function. This is part two of the series. Now, just a reminder, this is L'Hopital's rule, where you can take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then evaluate the limit. The question that we want to answer here is, what if the answer to our limit is something like infinity times zero? For example, our function is a product and we take the limit of each of those products and we end up with infinity times zero. This limit is called an indeterminate form of type infinity times zero. So let's tackle two examples. Let's start with question number one. In question number one they ask, find the limit as x approaches negative infinity for the function x squared times e to the power of x. Now the goal here is to rewrite this function in such a way where it has a numerator and a denominator. And you have two options. You can either write it like this, e to the power of x over x to the power of negative 2, or you can write it as x to the power of 2 over e to the power of negative x. Let's use this one. Limit as x approaches negative infinity for x squared e to the power of negative x. We'll take the derivative of the top and the bottom. The derivative of the top is 2x, and the derivative of the bottom is negative e to the power of negative x. And what I did was I found the derivative of negative x, I placed it right there, and I left this function the way it is. Let's try to evaluate the limit for this. And if you evaluate the limit for this, you'll end up with the case that was described here where you have infinity times zero. And the reason why is two times infinity or two times negative infinity gives you two times that negative infinity. Similarly, we would bring this back to its normal form and evaluating e to the power of negative infinity, or in other words, e to the power of infinity will also give us zero, so that's a problem. So what we will do is we will apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. What that means is I'll find the derivative again of this and the derivative of that until I finally get the ideal situation where I can find the limit. So I've applied L'Hopital's rule once and I'm going to apply it again. And every time I apply it, I'll, I'll write down h. So the derivative of 2x is equal to 2 and the derivative of negative e to the power of negative x is equal to e to the power of negative x. So now I'll attempt to take the limit of this function. The limit as x approaches negative infinity, I'm going to place a very, very large negative number into x. Let's pretend it's 1 billion whatever. This would become very, very large. and a number divided by a very, very large number would give you 0.000, a really, really small number, and so therefore the limit is equal to zero. Let's move on to question two. In question two, they're asking us to find the limit as x approaches zero on its positive end for the function sine x times ln x. We'll use the same technique as above where we want to write this as a quotient somehow. And the only way you can write this as a quotient is Recall that sine x has a reciprocal function, and that reciprocal function is cosecant. So instead of writing sine x, we can write, at, write it as 1 over cosecant x. Let's do that. The limit as x approaches 0 from the plus end is equal to 1 over cosecant x, and at the top, we will write down ln x. And now we're going to apply L'Hopital's rule. I'll write an h to denote L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And the derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x cotangent x. So if we rearrange this, we end up with 1 over x times this, cosecant x, cotangent x. And of course, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, so we can write down sine x at the top, and cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent, so we can write down tangent at the top. All I'm doing is rearranging. And I'll put this negative at the top as well, 
And now I'll try to evaluate the limit for this simplified version of that function. And unfortunately, we end up with a zero at the bottom. So what we have to do is take L'Hopital's rule a second time. Now, the derivative of x is equal to 1. That's easy. And here we have to use the product rule. So I'll start off by finding the derivative of sine x. And the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. And I'm going to leave tangent the way it is. And at the same time, I have to find the derivative of tangent x. So the derivative of tangent x is equal to secant squared x. And sine x remains the way it is. I'm going to apply 0 to all my x's here should give you 0. And you can confirm this with your calculator. You can apply 0 into cosine, 0 into tangent, and so on. And use your calculator, and you will end up with 0 over 1, which gives us a limit of 0. So there you have it. Two more examples where we apply L'Hopital's rule to equations that are slightly more complicated. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.